In this video, we're going to take a look at the Copilot for model driven power apps. Now, you know, I probably get over enthusiastic about some of these new things and some of these AI things, but this one, it, this is top notch. I'm very, very happy to be showing this to you. This allows you to have an AI assistant inside your model driven app that can query the data inside the app. That means you can ask it for things like how many records were created, what's the average of this, what's the most common of that, all these sort of things. And we're going to have a go at exploring this together. I th This is bringing in stuff that you can't easily do in a model driven app at the moment without creating reports or without doing database queries, which honestly, most everyday users are never going to want to do. This use of AI to query data and to allow individual users to be able to find the information they want really easily without doing any kind of database querying, I think is one of the most important and exciting developments in how we're using this technology. Before we get into it, let me show you how you do the setup, because there are a couple of steps you need to do to make sure you've got some things toggled on so that this is going to work. And then we're going to have a play together and see what it can do. Two parts to the setup here. At the time of recording, this is September 2023. This is only available in preview in a US environment. If you're watching this in the future, hello, you might find that you don't need to do all of these things or that it's available elsewhere in the world. But for now, here's what we need to do. Power Platform Admin Center, you're going to go into your environment, click here on the settings icon, and there are two settings you need to do here. The first one is in the behavior section. You need to make sure that you're on this monthly release channel. Once you've made that selection, click Save and then navigate back to your settings. The second thing you need to do is to go into the features and make sure that in this lovely Copilot preview section here that this toggle switch is switched to on. You can see I've already done this earlier <laughs> and click save there as well. So that's all you need to do for the environment. The second thing you need to do is to set up your tables inside your model driven app to determine which things are going to be accessible to the copilot. So the copilot is effectively working with the search. You're deciding what data it has access to. So there are some settings at a table level to start with to say, I want this table to be accessible to the copilot. And then you need to choose which columns are available. It's important to do this because it doesn't just search across everything by default. You'd get junk if it did that. There are certain tables in here you want to be part of that search and others you don't and columns you want to be part of that search and others you don't. So you're in control of that. This is all very easy kind of toggle settings, but you do need to make sure that you're doing it. One warning here, there is a limit currently, I'm not sure if this will always be the case, on it being 1000 columns across your whole database that the copilot can search on. So don't just go in and switch this on for every single column on every single table. Again, you'll get junk if you do that, but you'll also hit that limit. So think about what are the important data points that you want to be searching on and using for your copilot. So within my table experience here, I'm going to go into properties and there are two settings that need to be enabled. These are usually enabled already for the out of the box tables. If you're using things like accounts and contacts, you don't have to go back and do this. But for your custom tables, either do this when you're setting them up, if you know in advance that you want to be using them for copilot. But if you are uh, coming back to it after the fact, like I am here, then this is what you need to do. So there are two settings we need to do here. This first one here, track changes, and the second one appear in search results. So you just need to make sure those two boxes are ticked for the table, click save, and that's a one off thing. So we've now said this table is going to be available for the copilot to search. The next thing we need to do is to tell it which columns we want to make available for search. What I'm going to do here is go into the views and you'll find for every table, the tables that are already in Dataverse and the custom ones you've created, that there's a view here called quick find. Even if you're not using the copilot just to enable Dataverse search, that global search bar at the top, this is the same experience. So at the moment, what we've got in here is contract ID and created on, which isn't terribly helpful. Down the bottom here, we've got the edit find table columns. So this is where we want to go in and say, which columns do we want to enable for the find? So again, we can see that we've just got the ID and the created on or something in there. So let's see, I would probably want to find account 
category contact. So these are the things that link back in. I've got a contract that has a certain type of category. It's linked to an account and a key person. I don't really care about who created it, but I might want to know when it was created on, like how many things have been created recently. And I would want to know the start date, the renewal date, I think the status and status reasons, so to find which ones are active or inactive, the value and the type. So I'm pretty much putting everything in there. I don't have to think too carefully about this because um, I am actually not got a huge database that I'm working with. But again, think about what you really want. Save and publish that. So once you've done that, you need to give it a little bit of time to index. The documentation says this can take anywhere between 15 minutes and a day, depending on how much data is in the system. And once that's done, you will be ready to have this experience. Let's give it a test run now. With all of those settings set up, you will find you just have this Copilot experience there. You don't need to do anything else to make that happen. And if you find that you don't want to use it and you want the screen real estate back, you can just click on that to close it down or open it back up again. So my app here has a table with all of the contract renewals related to an account and a contact who's in charge of that all in the system there. I've got a category, start date, renewal date, a type and a value. So let's give this a go. What is the average value of Okay, this allows you to do things that you would otherwise not find. So if you're doing sorting and filtering and things, we'll show you that in a minute, it all still works. But something like this right now, the average value of contracts, you can't easily do that in a model driven app. You'd have to build a report or yeah, you, you can't do it. You, <laughs> you have to find it. There we go, 13 and a half thousand. I think given what we've got here, let's see if that passes a common sense test. Yes, it does. Uh, what is our highest contract value? This is so much fun. I just, <laughs> I'm just genuinely stoked with this. Uh, what, what are we going to get here? Uh, $25,000. How many contracts do we have over $20,000? $20, one contract. We have one contract over $20,000. Let's say which contracts are overdue based on renewal date step it up a notch. The speed of this, as I said, is sometimes a little bit slow. I'm in Australia, geographically living in Australia, working on a US environment. So I think that's slowing down my experience. Plus I'm running my recording software over it. So, and it's in preview. So I think in real, in the real world, it wouldn't be quite as slow as I'm getting here. Oh, wow. Look at this. Contracts overdue based on renewal date are these ones. Now, this is interesting. The category of these contracts are zero, two, zero, and three. So that's not terribly helpful. That is the the, the value of that. So the category for me is that I've got things in here that are managed services in person support. So it's clearly working on the value and not the name. That's interesting. And same with the type. So that might be something uh, I could probably give it a thumbs up or some thumbs down and give Microsoft that feedback um, or hello Microsoft, maybe if you're watching this video. There we go. So it's giving me the search results. But so this is my point, right? If you know how to use the filtering in the system, you could go in and say filter by this, that or the other. But there are so many users who just don't know how to do that or don't get to that. The ability to ask for that in natural language, like I said, this is this is this is the goods. Hey, show me all my accounts. So you can also use this to navigate around the system. If you've got a, an app that's got a lot in it, obviously, if you're working with an app of this size, you'd probably just know to click on accounts, but it can give you that navigation help. There we go. That's cool. How about how many contacts do we have at Northwind Traders? I've tried some other things here where I use, you do have to use language that makes some sense to the system. So if you say how many people work at Northwind Traders, it doesn't understand it. We have seven contacts at Northwind Traders. I'll show you an example. If I say who is the key contact at Northwind Traders, it doesn't quite understand that because the field is actually called primary contact. So it's not interpreting key contact to primary contact. This one actually gives you, oh, it's made a lot. <laughs> it's made a liar of me. It didn't get that before. Okay, great. So if we go in and check that, there we go. Primary contact. Good one, Copilot. Thank you. Maybe it's learnt since I tested it an hour before recording this video. Now, the other thing we can do is search for things that were 
when things were created on. So I could say how many new contacts were added this month. So this way of being able to find things based on when they were created is something else that it can do. And then we'll step it up a notch and see if it can tell us where they came from. Here we go. There are three new contacts added this month. Uh, I sort of wanted to show it to me. Um, find the contacts added this month at Northwind. Let's see if it can do that. It is fun playing with this stuff. Pop questions in the comments below of other things you'd like me to try and I can do round two of this or we can do it as a live stream and try it out. Here we go, this is better. The contacts added this month are these people. All right, and then I could go in and say show all on a page and get that same experience again. This is <laughs> this is awesome. I'm gonna keep playing. Check out my other content here on Copilot and thank you so much for watching.